It is 649. This is your morning in eight minutes happening today. Knox County Commissioners will discuss the future of ambulance services in the area. Right now, Mayor Glenn Jacobs is requesting the county terminate its agreement with AMR. In a letter to the commission, Mayor Jacobs says there's been significant changes in health care since the original agreement was made with AMR in 2013. Jacobs hopes that by terminating the current deal, they can work together on a new one. Tonight's work session will start at five o'clock in the city county building. They'll vote on the proposal next week. And right now, we now know the names of the two people shot on Lay Avenue in East Knoxville. Police say Demetrius Bomar and Lamar Harshaw were both shot last Wednesday in what appears to be an attempted robbery. Both drove themselves from the scene and flagged down KPD officers. Bomar died at UT Medical Center. Harshaw is still recovering. Police are still looking for the suspects responsible. And the man accused of killing a Chattanooga College student is behind bars this morning with a $5 million bond. Jason Chin made his second appearance before a judge. The district attorney says he stabbed Jasmine Pace 60 times before putting her body in a suitcase. Investigators found evidence of the crime at Chin's apartment, which led to his arrest. He's charged with criminal homicide and will be back in court in February. And a man is behind bars this morning accused of stealing more than 4,000 gallons of diesel from a gas station in Middle Tennessee. That's valued after, or that's valued more than $20,000. Javier Rodriguez Dennis is seen on surveillance video making several trips to the gas station. Investigators say he was able to rig the gas pump with help from a device that made it difficult for the store to detect. The store would see that only a few gallons were pumped, but in reality, he was stealing hundreds at a time. He is charged with theft and vandalism. Police believe there may be other suspects connected to this crime. And developing this morning, flu cases across the country are the highest in a decade, according to the CDC. They say nearly 25% of Americans tested positive compared to 3% a year ago. Overall, 120,000 Americans have been in the hospital with the flu. More than half of those patients died. According to the latest data from the CDC, Tennessee is still ranked the worst state right now when it comes to the flu. Meanwhile, the FDA is fast tracking a two in one vaccine that targets both the flu and COVID at the same time. A fast track design designation speeds up the development and reviewing of a drug needed to fight serious health threats. The vaccine has been in trials for the past month. And new details this morning as the man accused of bombing an American jetliner over Scotland back in 1988 is finally in U.S. custody 34 years later. It remains the deadliest terror attack on British soil. All 259 people died on board. 11 died on the ground. Two years ago, the Trump administration brought charges against the man they say built the bomb, Abu Aguila Mohammed Massoud, Libyan national. He was detained in Libya last month and is now in U.S. custody. The Justice Department says the suspect will make his initial court appearance at a federal district court in Washington, D.C. And in an interview with 60 Minutes, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen says while there are always risks of a recession, she believes inflation will be much lower next year. Yellen also predicts the labor market will remain quite healthy while pointing out the drop in gas prices as another positive sign. And those lower prices at the pump could be threatened by the largest U.S. onshore oil spill in nearly a decade. In Kansas, there's a rush to repair and clean up a ruptured part of the Keystone Pipeline. The owner, Canada's TC Energy, shut the pipeline down after more than 500,000 gallons of crude oil poured into a local creek. So far, the spill caused just a brief surge in crude prices. Right now, NASA is celebrating a successful return of its Artemis moon ship. The Orion capsule splashed down just off the coast of San Diego. Next up, NASA plans to use the data collected on this mission to choose a crew for the Artemis II, which could take off in 2024. Then NASA plans to put astronauts back on the moon in 2025. Well, new this morning, some good news for travelers. You'll soon have another option to fly direct from Knoxville to New York City. American Airlines is adding a direct flight from McGee Tyson Airport to LaGuardia starting in May. The flight will be once a day. The company says it's part of their Northeast Alliance with JetBlue. And one of Smoky Mountain's most popular trails will be closed today and tomorrow. A geotechnical crew will be out today with a drill rig taking samples as part of a rehabilitation project. Crews will be taking samples of the land and some of the structures that date all the way back to the 1930s. The trail is expected to reopen. That is Laurel Falls on Wednesday. WVLT is proud to be your official station of the Vols. The seventh ranked Tennessee basketball team picking up a big win over 13th ranked Maryland in New York. Despite struggling on offense, the Vols were able to hold off a Terrapins comeback in the second half to get the win 56-53. 
Next up, a trip out west to take on Arizona this Saturday night. It's a late one, 1030 on ESPN2. On the women's side, the Lady Vols cruising past Wright State 96-57 at Thompson Bowling Arena. A much needed win for the team after struggling a bit to start the season. The Lady Vols look to keep things rolling Wednesday night when Central Florida comes to town. Tip off is 630 on the SEC Network Plus channel. And just in time for some last minute Christmas shopping, UT is hosting an inventory sale today at the Neelan Thompson Sports Center. This is what it looked like in 2018, the last time they did it. That line really going around the building. My goodness. The one day event features jerseys, cleats, shoes, and other apparel. It's all up for sale. You may want to get there early. You can start lining up at 4 o'clock today. Doors open up at 5. The sale ends at 7 o'clock. I mean, this is all legit stuff. It is. I want a helmet. I want Hinden well, Hooker's helmet. Go get in line. I don't know if that, <laughs> that'll be there. All right, let's get a look at your traffic with Whitney Turner. If you're starting to make those holiday travel plans, just a reminder that this bridge replacement project is still taking place just over the state line in North Carolina on I-40. Just one lane of travel is open in each direction here over White Oak Road. So if you are heading this way for the holidays, you may want to consider taking I-81 to I-26. Getting out the door on this Monday morning. Right now, all those interstates and main roads are looking good. Even as you're moving around Knoxville this morning, that morning rush right around the corner. But right now, you're on time. Your first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Heather Haley. 655 now. We've got a couple days off from rain, but unfortunately we do have another soggy pattern setting up. That's why the first alert weather day was added for Wednesday afternoon and evening commute, and we'll be monitoring if this will carry beyond uh, really the morning commute on Thursday. Right now, the bulk of that rain is that later Wednesday through Wednesday night time frame. But that's going to add up. It's going to be pretty soggy there. A good inch and a half to two inches of rain will move through, and then we'll have some showers left over on Thursday. So right now, let's work on more clearing. We're already seeing a few more slices in those clouds, a few more gaps, more improvements from mostly cloudy to partly cloudy as we go through the next few hours and more sun ahead. Right now, it's 45 in Knoxville. At least it's milder, tucked in under clouds. 39 Washburn and Oneida, 42 in Crossville. And you can kind of look up and see that cloud cover but at least we're not seeing any rain. Now it's all dry today. It's more sun for your afternoon. Your Monday planner warms to around 50 at noon. Temperatures pop up even more when we have more sun this afternoon at 55 with a cool breeze. Now those clouds return tomorrow, but it is still dry. So we've got that going for us. And then that Wednesday WVLT first alert weather day, but it is a cold front. So we'll really feel that dip in temperature by this weekend. Even a couple of mountaintop snow showers to track. I'll have you covered on that latest timeline coming up on the CW. Right. I know I've needed the sun just to see the sun. Oh. I can't imagine y'all have dogs that need to get outside I'm, and want to go I'm running. Done. Children. <laughs> Muddy paw Children prints too. everywhere. <laughs> it is 6.56. We are headed over to WBXX on this Monday morning. Hope you have a good day.